Good morning, everybody. I'm Fred Thiel, State Assemblyman for the 2nd District. I represent uh, the South Fork and Southeastern Brookhaven, and I want to welcome you all to our press conference uh, uh, here to support public radio on the east end of Long Island. And we're here, obviously, with a great crowd here today. Uh, and we're here with our elected officials really to show our support for the continuation of WLIU, for the continuation of public radio on the East End. Uh, I'm joined by our, our State Senator, Ken Laval. We have all levels of government represented here from uh, the county, the Commissioner of Economic Development, Skip Heaney, uh, Paul Rickenback, Mayor of the Village of East Hampton, Village Government, and uh, three of our, uh, our town council people, Anna Throne Holtz, Chris Snuzzy, and Nancy Grabowski, uh, and also uh, Jane Final Borgo, representing Congressman Bishop, and Mark Epley from the village of Southampton. Timing is everything, Mark. Thank you. So, obviously, not just the people that are standing in front of the microphone today, elected officials and people that have been with WLIU for years, but the number of people on the other side. Also, uh, I'm going to interrupt myself. Mary Pearl, the new dean at uh, Southampton, Stony Brook. Uh, also here, thank you very much, Mary. Um, but we're here to show our support today for WLIU and for the need to continue WLIU. It is a tremendous community resource. Uh, it has been for years. You can see that there are not only a large number of people that are out here today that support the station, but if you've gotten the letters, the emails, the phone calls that I have, you know the passion with which they support this public radio station. And it is our public radio station here on the East End. It is, as I said, is, it is a great community resource uh, as we are trying not just to pr promote culture and to promote entertainment through the radio station, but also education. This is a big part of our mission, certainly, and being able to promote educational opportunities. Senator Laval, long uh, and well known as, as, as uh, first the chairman and now the ranking Republican member of the education, Higher Education Committee in the Senate. I'm the ranking Republican member of the Education Committee in the Assembly. Uh, obviously, the station is also very important to us from that perspective. But this station goes much more deeper than that. It is part of our community fabric. Uh, we always say that the East End is a very special place. I want to introduce now, we're going to have a number of speakers uh, my partner in Albany, and we've worked together on many, many uh, of these kinds of issues. I mentioned uh, uh, s the issue with Southampton College, but that's just one of many. Uh, he's a great leader uh, in the state Senate, and there aren't that many of them, but he's a great one uh, in the state Senate, uh, and has accomplished great things for the uh, for the uh, for the, the this region and, and for the state of New York. Committed to higher education. Uh, committed to the East End, uh, my partner, State Senator Ken Laval. Th thanks, Fred. And Fred is uh, just a wonderful partner to work with. And um, uh, I'm going to take a little bit of a different tack than Fred because he kind of laid everything out very, very neatly, very precisely. First, I want to start with a thank you to Mary Pearl, who um, uh, really is committed to uh, make sure that uh, WLIU continues and I think has demonstrated in meetings and so forth that um, uh, she is working with us and part of our, our uh, community to make this happen. Um, most of you who know me uh, know that um, uh, and, and s I don't know, sometimes people view it critically that my cup is always half full. And with this um, uh, encounter, I only call it an encounter, uh, is that uh, we are going to be successful. There's no doubt. And uh, we're all going to say, yes, we can, right? Yeah. Yes, we can. <laughs> yes, we can. Um, there are, and Fred laid it out, there are steps and hurdles. None of the hurdles um, are really too high for us to comfortably um, leap over. 
he talked about Roger Tillis. Roger Tillis is really a twofer. He's not only uh, a member of the Board of Regents, but a former member of the LIU board. So he knows, and I guess he still has contacts at Long Island University, <laughs> right? Um, and, and so uh, Roger has been uh, effective because, as you know, with all of these endeavors that we go through, um, sometimes things get a little tense, you know, because we have real people, we're not machines, and people get a little testy at times, and they say things that they wish they didn't say, but we are on a good pathway. Wally Smith, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay? You need someone you know, all of us are, are really, we're, we're part of the team. He's the quarterback, and he just really says, we've, we've got to do this, we've got to do this. There's a potential threat here, potential threat there. But we are really on uh, a really great pathway. Fred has done um, also, being out on the point, um, terrific uh, job. Uh, at some point, they've brought me into the deliberations, and uh, now it's time to use um, the clout that I have in higher education and with the state ed department to make sure that things uh, are done in a, in a timely way. But everything, right Wally, is going on course. And I hate to say it, I, I, I really pity the person who gets in the way and <laughs> tries to screw this up. Thank you. So I mentioned at the outset, we're being uh, hosted today uh, by the, certainly we're at, uh, at the radio station, but we're on the campus of uh, the State University, Stony Brook, Southampton. And I, I wanted, to, I mentioned, I wanted to just invite Mary Pearl up just to say a couple of words. Um, well, thank you, and, and welcome to everybody. Um, it's always a pleasure when uh, Stony Brook Southampton uh, can become a, a venue for shedding light rather than heat on uh, <laughs> topics. No, really, uh, this is a very positive group, and uh, we're all um, working together uh, to ensure that there remains a, a voice on the radio waves for um, e the East End, which has uh, such a special uh, cultural heritage and such uh, environmental importance, which is where my heart lies. Um, and uh, I, um, as I've said to, to Wally, um, it's a, a programmatic marriage made in heaven uh, to be at a university uh, that is, uh, aspires to be innovative and to celebrate uh, all that is special about the East End. So I look forward in years ahead in its new home. Um, I'm very uh, anxious to, uh, to see it well-placed, independent, and uh, uh, it, it's always been the free-spirited, but uh, independent and, and financially uh, stable on its own two feet is, is a very exciting prospect, and we're all here with you, Wally, to, to make sure that that happens. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I wanted to take the opportunity to uh, introduce and have Skip Heaney, who is the County Commissioner of Economic Development and Affordable Housing, up to say a few words. Thank you very much, Fred. Uh, first, let me begin by saying on behalf of County Executive Steve Levy and my staff in the Department of Economic Development and Workforce Housing and the Office of Film and Cultural Affairs that we're very grateful for the opportunity to be here this morning in, in an effort to uh, save public radio here on the East End. I, I must tell you that um, uh, I, I'm, I'm guilty of being one of those people who's big on listening and small on making that personal dig into the pocket. And I have to acknowledge that, and I'm sure that I'm not the only one here who believes strongly in public radio out here, but really hasn't done the heavy lifting that's required. I stand here guilty, and I'm going to change that bad habit after we leave this. Okay. So, you know, I, for years, I would either travel east to Southampton Town Hall, and more recently west to Hop Hog in the morning. And I would faithfully be listening to In the Morning with Bonnie Grice, 
and the local news with Michael Mackey. And I'd even put up with the probing for dollars by <laughs> Dr. Wally Smith <laughs> and just go through it knowing that full well it came to an end. It would be back to, you know, Bonnie's conversation and her morning guest and some pretty darn good eclectic mix of music on a, on a, on a daily basis. I, I, I want to say that, you know, during the years prior to taking the position of commissioner for economic development in the county, I made no connection between uh, the little tagline that used to say, um, brought to you or underwritten in part by the Department of Economic Development and Workforce Housing. It didn't connect with me, but today I can stand here and tell you, wow, is that an important connection because that allows us on a county level to underwrite programs information, news, that is so important, not just to communication, but to quality of life, and in fact, to supporting the economic engine that is so significantly held up by culture and the arts here on the East End. Whether it be uh, in the morning with Bonnie Bryce, as it has been in prior years, uh, or with movie talk, or allowing so many of the local um, arts and culture council groups, I see Pat Schneider here from the East End Arts Council, um, or the Parish uh, Museum, or Guild Hall, or West Hampton Performing Arts Center, or so many other venues that are necessary in order to promote culture and the arts. The fact that people who promote those programs have access on WLIU radio to promote those programming not only um, underwrites quality of life here, it really helps to support our local economy. So I'm here today representing the county executive and my full staff uh, to lend our support in, in whatever reasonable, positive ways that we can to save public radio because it is so important on the East End. Thanks again, Fred, for uh, the kind invitation to be with you. I'd like to have a couple of the, uh, of the, uh, the town council members come up to say a few words and uh, We'll start with Anna Throne Holst. Thank you. Um, there are not a lot of things that bring all of us out together. Uh, and when we do all come out together, it's usually for something really, really important. And this is a very, very good example of that. I don't think any of us want to close our eyes for a minute and imagine this area without WLIU. 88.3, uh, because it just wouldn't be what it is today. And I don't think any of us want to think of this area without LIU 88.3 in our, in our lives. So we need to do all the hard work that Fred is talking about, but I, I can't imagine it not happening with all of us involved in it. So thank you. Thank you, Anna. I feel another capital budget request coming our way. I don't know why that is, but... Uh, uh, I, but I'd like to introduce uh, Councilman Chris Nuzzi from the town of Southampton. Thank you. Maybe we have some money in our capital budget to <laughs> lend to Stony Brook. Um, <laughs> good, good morning, and, and thank you, Dr. Pearl, for hosting, and WLIU as well. Uh, there are a lot of things that seem to bring us here uh, on this campus. Uh, in particular over the past several years and as Anna said uh, uh, there are uh, some things in our community that always seem to bring us together and, and uh, what goes on here is one of those uh, things and uh, the importance of maintaining and saving WLIU uh, for local programming as our uh, you know, regional voice here, uh, not just for the mix of, of music, but for the, uh, the informative talk shows relevant to uh, those things important to us out here on the East End um, is uh, certainly of paramount importance. And there are a couple of individuals who always uh, seem to, to be ahead of that and, and to be, seem to be leading the charge. And, you know, I'm proud to, to stand next to them and work with them on any number of these initiatives, in particular this one, and that's our State Assemblyman uh, Fred Thiel and Senator Ken Laval. Um, so I certainly thank them uh, um, for all of their efforts, for their leadership in doing that. <laughs> but I, I think, as, as has been stated, there are a lot of special things about this community. We're always talking about our, our environment, our cultural resources, and then there's uh, uh, resources like our public radio station here that does directly report 
uh, on the things that are important to us, uh, that are local events, that are local news. I've spent time on uh, Bonnie Grice's morning show uh, myself to talk about things happening uh, in Southampton, in Town Hall. And uh, that's something that we simply can't lose. So certainly count me in. I know uh, everyone here uh, will be a part uh, of the effort and lead the charge in making sure that uh, this is exactly where they stay. So thank you for having me here today. We also have uh, our other members of our town board here. I'd like to ask Sally Pope, Councilwoman Pope, to say a few words. Thank you, Fred. Hello, everyone. Thank you, Fred, and thank you all for being here. One of the things that I have really relished this year is being a part of a local community and making a contribution to a local community. I, I traveled internationally in my prior work, and it is wonderful to be at home. And what makes a home but having this opportunity to have the communication among all of us that WLIU provides? So thank you again for being here. Thank you, Fred. And thank you. It's a pleasure being here with my fellow town board members and all of you. So let's, let's make it happen. And, uh, lastly, I'd like to introduce uh, Nancy Grabowski. Thanks very much, Fred. Fred made an earlier comment, and it was, it was interesting. Be before he had come to the microphone, I was thinking to myself, you know, when all is said and done, WLIU 88.3 really is part of the fabric of our lives. So when he articulated it, it kind of jarred me a little bit. What's, what's clearly apparent to me here as well is that this is such a coordinated effort. And with the leadership of Wally Smith and Dean Mary Pearl and our state senator, Ken Laval, and with Fred Thiel, we get the feeling that this is really going to happen. So it's my honor and privilege to get behind this effort because we certainly want this, uh, this important public radio station to stay on the air and uh, to be able to continue with their mission and uh, to continue to give us the, uh, the uh, cultural and all of the other aspects that, uh, that they reflect uh, so nicely on their radio station. So thank you. Uh, and I said we have a number of our, uh, our, our village officials here, uh, and I'd like to have one of them speak. Mark, we're closest uh, to, your, uh, to your home turf, so if you'd like to say a few words on behalf of the station. Uh, I think almost everything's been said today, and, and you guys really don't want to listen to a lot of politicians speak, so I'm going to th say three words that the village of Southampton is going to get behind. Yes. We can. And that's what we're doing. Thanks. And uh, representing Congressman Tim Bishop uh, is Jane Final Borgo. Tim has had to go back to Washington. There's some health care thing going on down in Washington. He couldn't be here today, uh, but Jane is here to represent him. Thanks very much, Fred. And, uh, Congressman Bishop would love to be here today. This is a uh, radio station very near and dear to his heart. Um, he has been here since he was here in the beginning when it was established. He's a dear friend of Wally Smith's. And I just want to tell you, he's 100% behind this effort and will do everything he possibly can in D.C. to make sure that it happens. Thank you. Now we're really down to the people that have been working full time to really try to make this happen. And uh, it's been. Uh, it's been a pleasure to try to assist them in any way possible. When we were in Albany yesterday, I, uh, I, I said, you know, that well, to the education department that Wally and I made a good team because the things that he knew, uh, I didn't know, and the things that I knew, he didn't know. But, but unfortunately for me, there are a lot more things that he knows that I don't know. <laughs> so uh, uh, he's been great. But you know, also leading this has been has been Porter Bibb, and I wanted to uh, invite him up to, to say a few words. Thank you, and I'm overwhelmed at their support that we've had. It's been four weeks since LIU announced that they were selling this station, and the unbelievable outpouring of support, and, and uh, it's just it, at every level, the elected officials, the, the people who live here, pe the, the media, uh, people who are LIU's or WLIU's biggest competitors, um, 
all of the local print media, the radio stations out here, the television stations, everybody has joined in and given us the feeling that, as Mayor Epley said, it's not just, yes, we can, it's, yes, we will. And I'm going to give you a brief update on the situation because it is still a lot fluid, but we think it's a possible uh, opportunity for Long Island University and 88.3 and Stony Brook, Southampton, and everybody else who's involved in this project to make it a win-win-win-win situation for everybody. We, we are presently putting together a bid that will be a full and fair price. Um, it's hard to say exactly what it's going to be, but we know from talking to the broker that Long Island University has engaged uh, what they estimate a public radio station like WLIU should be worth on the open market. And we intend to put a bid on the table that is going to be full and fair and maybe in excess of what a fair market value might be. Uh, we've also been working very hard to develop a business plan and a business model for WLIU that shows that the station can be sustainable going forward. After we've paid the purchase price, paid for a, a, a relocation and uh, a new venue and a restart of the station, um, we are, we are projecting now a business plan that will show that this station will not need any more capital investment once we've raised the initial amount of money, and it probably will not exceed about $3 million in toto. We've gotten some phenomenal support from local financial institutions and from a number of potential funding sources who are making us feel very confident that we are going to be putting a fully funded offer on the table for Long Island University to consider. Uh, the deadline that they have <laughs> the deadline that Long Island University has imposed on the process is September 23rd. Um, sometime before then, our offer will be out there, and we will make it public so that everybody will know where we stand in this mix. We don't know who else is going to be bidding. We've, we've picked up background information that there may be five or six other uh, Sources, they have to be the religious, educational, or nonprofit uh, licensed radio broadcasters to come into this, the, the process. We can't tell you whether they're going to be evangelical religious broadcasters or educational stations from Connecticut or New York. We don't know. But we intend to work with LIU and to make them as much a winner as we will all be when this station is returned to the local community and is the voice of the East End. Thanks a lot for everything that you're doing. And uh, our last speaker, but our most important speaker, really is, is the heart of this radio station. Has thrown himself into the station all of these years and really has, has done so much to make sure that we continue to have a public broadcasting station. Dr. Wally Smith. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I just want you to know that four weeks ago, there were 25,000 of these stress balls. <clears throat> My staff and I have chewed up most of them, and this is what's left, and you're all welcome to one of them uh, as you leave, if you would like to have that. Before I go uh, further into just a few remarks I want to make, I want you to know the people that really are this radio station. And most of them are standing right over here. If you don't know, Kathy Russo, <laughs> Bonnie Grice, Ed German, the Urban Home Commander, <laughs> Brian Cosgrove, Stephen Gaines is right here. Um, some of the rest of the staff, Adrian Kateyev, who's working with us, is here. Jamie Berger, Kyle Lynch, who's back there. Uh, in the studio right now, uh, Connie Conway, who's doing this as a news broadcast, so she's covering it at this point. Nancy Simpson, who's been in the pockets of every business in, in the area, uh, who is our uh, fundraiser. Michael Mackey. <laughs> You're standing too close, Michael. <laughs> is here. And if I'm, who else? Who's? Oh, Michael Howell. Nancy Montgomery, Paula Hank is back here. See, if it had all gone in one spot, then my feeble old mind could actually zero in on it. Uh, just very quickly to thank all of you, all of you from the bottom of our heart. We could not 
even have started this without the commitment you have made, Ken, all of you who are here, and this staff who have been remarkable in their dedication and commitment to hanging in there with great uncertainty about their own futures, as a matter of fact. And we want to just thank them publicly for that and for the support they continue to give us. We're going to know pretty soon what happens between October 3rd and December 3rd. Uh, that is still being worked out at the university. Uh, if it works the way we want, we'll try to be sure that you have these voices on the air for another couple of months so that we can make the transition cleanly to the new organization, which will be called Peconic Public Broadcasting. And that's coming up, we hope, in the next few weeks. We're probably going to know by the middle of October what the final decision is, and tons of work to do between now and then. And I just just have a, excuse me, a couple of things to say. One is, in fairness to Long Island University, they have invested a significant amount of money in this operation over the years. They got pushed against the wall by the financial crisis, and they have, you know, done their best to try and figure ways to keep the station, but it was not possible. So they have been supportive of us over time. And uh, sometimes they throw us some surprises, which is what always gets them into trouble. But <laughs> nevertheless, uh, they have been very, very in, uh, much invested in what we do. And we wouldn't be here today without it. And I invite all of you, if you don't, have not done so, walk through the studios. They are absolutely gorgeous. And I want to thank Mary Pearl for letting us stay longer and also for helping us um, as we look forward to our being the new owners of this station, meaning us folks, uh, this station, uh, to uh, working with her in the transition as we move to another location and get settled in there. But she made a very important point. She and I have gotten together on some extraordinary programming ideas, both in the arts and in the sciences, that are going to be great part of the new uh, sound of WPBB, Peconic Public Broadcasting, PPB, right. Um, we're working on that call sign. <laughs> <laughs> so again, thank you, all of you, for being here and the wonderful things you said about this radio station. We really believe in it. Radio stations are endangered species. They are actually, you know, uh, much like our, our uh, special endangered forests and things like that. It's a very limited spectrum. There's not a lot of it available. And we need to be able to preserve the peace that we have here so that we can continue to provide the programming that you want to have it. And we don't need somebody from outside bringing in something different. We need us to be able to do it. And with your help, we're going to make that happen. Thank you all for coming today. If there are questions, I'll ask somebody to answer them. <laughs> Fred? Now, there's a lot more that needs to be done. I'm not going to go through all of that today, but we are under a very, very tight time frame to get it all done. But as I said at the outset, we're committed to get this done. Um, and uh, we need, we're going to need your help. Different, different people have different skills, and uh, uh, obviously there's fundraising that has to go involved, be involved, uh, have to deal with the FCC at some point, all sorts of things that will have to get done. But we, as I said, are committed to get them done. <laughs>